Hi and welcome to All Things Marvelous. I'm John Paul and today we're going to be rolling and unfolding a cube, then making a looping animation with it that looks like this. You may have noticed I haven't posted in a few months and that's because I was struggling to think of new things to show you that haven't been covered that much. But then that led to days of procrastination and the next thing I knew, three months had gone by. So I've decided to do a series of videos just concentrating on cool looping videos that I've seen on Instagram and that I felt that I could break down and show you how to accomplish the same thing in Blender. Here's a taste of the type of things to come. Most of them involve some sort of complication that I had to overcome to figure out how to do it. So I thought making a video to explain what that was would be something worthwhile. Okay, with all that out the way, let's get into the video. The first thing we're going to add to the scene is a mesh plane. Then go into edit mode and select the top edge. Next, we're going to press E to extrude, then Y and 2. And this will extrude the plane by one square on the Y axis. You're going to do the same one more time to make it three squares long and then we're going to do one on each side and one more at the bottom to make a cross formation. When you want to go on the opposite way, press E for extrude, 2 and then the minus sign and this will extrude it in the opposite direction. Ok, now we need to fold the box and the way we're going to do that is by using an armature and bones. So press Ctrl A and select Armature and this will give us a bone. Then hit S and 2 to scale it up to the same size as the box. Go into edit mode and click on the ball at the end of the main bone and hit E to extrude and Y to align it to the cross and 2. Then select the bone and hit Alt P and select Disconnect Bone. Press G to grab it and hit Y, 1 to move it in line with the next square down. Grab the bone and duplicate it, then head over to the top down view and rotate it 90 degrees, making sure you've selected the 3D cursor from the pivot point drop down. Do this two more times to create this cross shape. Now grab the sphere at the end of the first bone and hit E to extrude one last time, then Y and 2. Great, now head over to the file window and select all the bones except the beginning bone and hit G, Z, 2 and minus and this should snap them to the floor plane in line with the cross. Make sure that you rename the bones with numbers so that you understand which is which and the central bone as main bone. Now select the mesh plane cross then shift select the armature and press Ctrl P and select parent to armature with empty groups. Great! All that we need to do now is animate the box unfolding. First we need to fold the box shut. Before trying to fold the box you need to assign each flap a vertex group that correlates to the bones you renamed. To do this click the plane cross and select edit mode then change to face selection. Click each individual square as required and assign a vertex group that is the same as the name you labelled the bones, 1 for 1, 2 for 2, etc. Now if you head over to the armature and select pose mode, when you rotate the bone you should see the mesh move with it. Select each bone as shown and use the side views to accurately rotate the bones to fold the box. You can press R to rotate and hold CTRL to snap them at 45 degree angles. Great, now we need to set up the necessary bits to allow us to animate the cube rolling. This is done by parenting a series of empties around the cube aligned to the edges that will allow us to roll the cube one by one. Let's begin by creating a main empty that will hold the armature and mesh. Hit CTRL A and select Empty Cube. Then hit G, Z and 1 and this will align it with our cube. We need to make sure that the next set of empties align exactly with the middle of the edges. I do this by selecting the armature and hitting Edit, then select the bottom ball of the second bone and hit Shift S. This will bring up the selection menu. Select Cursor to Selected and this will allow us to create an empty exactly where we need it. Press CTRL A and create an empty cube again, then hit S full stop and 2 to scale it down to 0.2 of its original size. 
Now head over to the side view and turn on snap to increment. Then duplicate and position seven more empties going around in a counterclockwise direction. Always make sure you are labeling the empties in the file window in the order you have created them. This is very important when you come to parenting them all. Now you need to parent them in reverse order, starting with the main empty, then working back from eight to one as shown in the video, so that you end up with a file sequence that looks like this. The last thing to do is then select the armature and plane and parent that to the main box empty. If all has worked correctly, then you should now be able to move on to the animation of each empty to make the box roll. You can test this by grabbing empty number one and rotating it. This should rotate all the elements, then number two should rotate everything except empty number one and so on. Now it's time to animate the roll. Start with number one and open up the timeline and add a keyframe on frame one using the transform controls on the right hand side of the screen by pressing I over them. Move to frame 10 and press R to rotate and using control to rotate the cube by 90 degrees and then press I again over the transform controls. Now select number two empty and add a keyframe then move to frame 20 and then again rotate the cube 90 degrees and add another keyframe on the X rotation. Do this for all the remaining empties remembering to move forward by 10 frames each time. Next select the armature and go into pose mode. Starting with bone 2 do a similar thing with each bone so that you make the box unfold. Remember to move the timeline forward by 10 frames each time you animate the bone unfolding. Great. Now we have the basic animation. Let's tweak it a bit to make it look more natural and a bit slower. To do this, open another window and select the graph editor option. Here you'll be able to see all the animation keyframes we've put in so far when you select the various elements. Select all the rolling animation and right click to change the interpolation mode to exponential. Next, I decide that I need the animation to go a bit slower. I do this by selecting all the bones and empties so that I can see all of the F curves in the graph editor and in the timeline with the cursor on frame one, hit the S key to scale and spread out the animation keyframes. Okay, cool. Now I move on to opening the box. I wanna make it slowly unfurl and I do this by adjusting the bends in the F curves. I select the last bone animation and move the start frame back a bit. Then I select all of them and while having my cursor on the beginning frame, scale them again to spread them out like we did previously. I still want more of a tail with the last bone animation, so I move it further back. Then select the handles of the F curves for the last keyframe and move them back as well so that the curve has a longer fall off. If you hold control while moving them, it will lock it to the axis you are dragging. I tweak it a little more using the techniques mentioned and we end up with an animation that looks like this. Okay, great. Next up, select the cube and add a solidifier modifier and a bevel. Adjust the thickness of the solidify and offset to one as shown in the video. Then use the bevel modifier to make it a more solid cube with thickness. You can zoom in on the unfurled cube and dial in the settings to something that you like the look of. Now we need to make duplicates of them in a row. Select all of the elements in the file window and hit M key over them to add them to a collection and call this rolling fold cube. Turn on incremental snap function again and then select all the elements in the 3D window. Press Shift D to duplicate the setup and move them as shown in the video with an offset from the top down view. Next, we have to offset each set of animation by about 20 frames. As you can see, I had a bit of difficulty in trying to get this to work as sometimes it wouldn't select all of the bone animations and make the box look weird when rolling. To fix this and make sure you are grabbing all of the correct keyframes for each bone, First, select all of the armatures, go into edit mode, hit A, and it will select all of the bones. This way, 
each time you select all the elements for each box, it will also have all the correct keyframes for the bones. Then stagger them so each box starts rolling 20 keyframes apart from each other. Next, we need to fill in the next row, but the shape needs to be facing the other way around. We can do this easily by duplicating the whole box, an armature, and in the file window move them to the main scene and out of the rolling fold cube collection. Then select the armature and go into pose mode. Select the main bone and rotate it 180 degrees from the top down view. Now you can see that it rolls and unfolds in the opposite direction. Add this to a new collection and call it rolling fold cube backwards. Then repeat the same process for duplicating and staggering the animation as before. Next, we have to repeat this process about six times. Each time duplicating the previous set of cubes, making sure you select them all and drag them out of the old collection into the main scene in the file window, then adding them to a new collection with incremental numbers to keep track of them, but also to be able to turn them off to keep the project running quickly. You can see a collection of flattened crosses at the end of the rolling animation. I did this by simply duplicating four rows once they had unfurled and then deleting the animation from them. Unfortunately, when I did this, it left the armature on them and did this weird looking thing. To fix it, I just deleted all of the armatures from each mesh. So the last thing to do once all the animation is done is to make it loop. And you can do this by a trick of the camera movement. What you need to do is line up the angle you want to start at and then move it along the Y axis so that the animation lines up with the box unfurling. I start by lining up the animation from the first line of cubes and then line it up with the last line. And then I half it to make sure that there are always cubes unfurled in the viewfinder at all times. This takes a little bit of trial and error and zooming right into the viewfinder, but it should be pretty straightforward. Make a keyframe at the start with the camera, move the camera to the left on the Y axis, and then line it up with the same animation of the same cube in the same position, unfurling at the same animation keyframe. Then flick between the first frame and the last frame of the project to dial it in so it looks like nothing has moved. For me, it was from about frame 400 to 480. That was the sweet spot in the timeline. From here, all that's left to do is texture and light the scene. I'll leave that to your own choices for this as I did three different variations and I'm sure you'll have fun coming up with something on your own. Just make sure that they're all the same color or the effect won't work. So there you go. I hope you found something useful here and you enjoyed following along. As mentioned, this is the first in a series of these type of videos, so like and subscribe so you get notified of the new ones as they come out, and I'll catch you on the next video.